So today's video, we're going to talk about moving averages, exponential moving averages and other ones to go with it, just to give you an idea. This is a great educational tutorial, so make sure you watch. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Now, I get asked this question a lot, moving averages. So today, I'm going to cover it. If you are new here, make sure you have subscribed, hit that bell button so you don't miss anything, and also leave a like, right? So we're talking about trading strategies, we're talking about the stock market, we're talking about cryptocurrency kind of elements as well. There's a lot to go on, right? And not everyone likes to use them, but I'm going to explain a way on how you can use them if you wish to use them. Key is simplicity, right? Don't have too many on there. Don't go for too many kind of crossover methods. You've got to look at different things. It has to suit your style. What I mean by that is, what is your lifestyle about? Are you into swing trading? Do you want to do positional holds? Do you want to do this, that, and the other with your life? And these give you a very, very good betrayal on the market without worrying too much about structure. It will alert you to certain things earlier and also a little bit later. So make sure you understand that. Now, let's talk about the basics, right? You need TradingView, or if you're using an exchange like Binance or a broker, whatever it may be, you can put them on. Now, you've got different variations. Now, what I want to do here, I want to go to a new chart. And we're just going to do new. Boom. Because why not? Right, let's keep it nice, fresh, simple, because you need to learn this a little bit. Now, I'll remove the volume, and the rest of it can just stay as it is, right? Now, we've got structure. The structure is key. So we've got, obviously, with Ethereum right now, this is the Ethereum dominance, just to give you an idea. You know, you can see that we are forming a bullish structure. We've just been zigzagging all the way up. Now we're starting to get to a point where maybe it might be starting to flag lower. Usually an EMA will be good for that. So how do you put it on your chart? Simple. Put in moving, and then you get a lot of different ones. So you get moving average, which is this yarn. And you get exponential moving average, or you can get the weighted or the ribbon. I personally use the exponential. Moving average is a little bit different. It's just, you know, without the kind of, you can see there's a little bit of a variation there. And I'll explain the difference. You've also got a whole moving average. You've got a smooth moving average, as I said, weighted. So you get different variations of different things, right? Then it becomes a mess. <laughs> so don't make your chart messy, but we'll go off with the exponential first <clears throat> to show you some stuff, right? Now, as you know, if you've been watching me, and I'm, and I'm going to get asked questions, how do you get your coloured one? I'll show you that in a second. I use the EMA21. The EMA21 for me is kind of a very, very good strategic kind of thing for me. I like it a lot, especially on the daily time frame. You can see very, very clearly, you can ride moves for a while and only look for longs in retracements and corrections and get that kind of gist very, very quickly. It also works very, very well in cryptocurrency. Now, Moving on to something else now, as I just said, how to get the colored one, it's that one. So if you go onto your scripts and look for colored EMA, Zen and the Arse, I think it's roughly called, that is how you get the two different colors, right? If you're wondering. Now, let's go to a stock. Let's find the S&P, for example, an index. Now this is an index chart. The moving average 20 is quite commonly used in the stock market, right? We've also got other traditional ones as well. So you've got the 50, you've also got the 100 and the 200 moving average, right? They are over a period of days. But when you start looking at the higher time frames of the three day or the weekly, the 20 is kind of the go to on a lot of cases. You can see very, very clearly how it is kind of structurally formed. And for the first time since essentially May 2020, we are below the moving average 20 on the stock market. A little bit bearish in my opinion, but hey ho. But as I say, there's other variations. People use a 50, right? Which is fine. You can see that we are literally on that 50. So if you are a positional holder as a stock market investing uh, investor, you may well find that you might well quite like this one. It's entirely up to you, but there's other ones out there. Again, if I go to cryptocurrency, so look at Polkadot, you know, oopsie, let me find one that's got a bit more data than that. Bitcoin. So you can use these as well on obviously cryptocurrency. You can see they have some sort of effect, right? Weirdly how they do work, right? Moving on to something like the whole moving average. This is a lot different. So make sure you do a quick Google. 
So if you're going to put like the 50 hull movement average on this, it's it's a lot more slopey and slanty. So just be careful with this one. This is it's good, but just it's a lot more aggressive. So just be careful with them. Um, so make sure you get your gauges right. And again, with the smooth one, the smooth one's a bit more. You could probably see very very quickly that you can use a lot lower in terms of this. So you can maybe go the 20 on this, and it will be pretty tight to certain metrics and it will give you some certain things. But as I say with this, there's quite a delay with it. So just be careful with a smooth moving average, right? But let's talk about a few little strategic things you can do. Now, personally, I like the EMAs, right? That's kind of my go-to. And if you are wanting to trade on this, you can use a few little metrics, right? So I prefer a single method. Why the single? Because it removes complications, right? The key and the rule is, right, in my opinion, is always wait for a spot. Don't just buy into it because it's crossed over. No, because you do get little fake outs like this. Like that's clearly a downtrend because we are forming new lows. You don't buy that. You've got to look at structure. You've got to look at how things are kind of aligned. If you've got an impulse and it's broken above a previous high and then the EMA is then supported for the price and it, we, we are going up, that is a good thing. When you start getting this sort of price, actually, we've had an impulse, we're pulled back, you've got a level here. You can see it all over the case in terms of we're broken above a certain level, we're pulled back into a support level twice here. There's a chance that we may well be holding that support level on a weekly time frame. The bigger the time frame, the more strong it can become. Now, another thing with this, and I want to teach you a few little tricks as well. The further away you go from the EMA, the more it wants to zip back. Right, that is a big, big thing, and I'm going to explain that in more detail in a second. When we go to the total market, but with this, that's a weekly time frame. Usually, you're going to be very, very patient. Personally, I like to use a three day and the daily time frame for certain things like this because it comes very, very apparent. So, when we zoom in and go back to like Bitcoin here, you can see very, very clearly that we're starting to trend upwards, right? We're starting to form a bit of a trend. We've got these higher lows kind of appearing, and then, we, yes, we are above the moving average a little bit. But we are still in an uptrend. You know, this is only a gauge, right? Again, go to the daily time frame. We'll be below it for a, a few little periods here, as you can see. So it, oh, let me go back to where it was. Bear with me. Right to the start. Do, 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 do. Here we go. So when we start looking at this, it's very much sidewaysy until it starts breaking. But we are still forming a load of highs. Then we start to, to get into the trend. And the trend then becomes your friend. And... The longer it goes on, the stronger it's going to become. And as you can see, it carries on going, carries on going until we finally top out here. Do, 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 do. Cool. Right. So just make sure you understand that. Now, let's talk about that index chart that I was talking about. Right. The trick with these sort of things are, oh dear, the further away you go from certain things with indexes, the more it wants to zip back, especially when you look at the daily time frame. So when you look at this, it pulls back. Look at this, pulls back, pulls back. Boom, right into it. And even when we go low, it wants to go back into it. It's like a magnet, right? Make sure you understand that. There's nothing wrong with you going, right, I want to buy at the start of this move. I want to try and sell the further away we go. But obviously the gauges are how do you do it? It's a bit of luck, really, you know. Sometimes they'll just carry on going, but sometimes they will zip back. But if you can kind of see, oh, I'm making too much money here. Oh, we're far away from that level. Oh, okay. Okay may want to try and rein me in my portfolio a little bit it does help now let's talk about crossovers now crossovers are useful in a way now i want to make this a little bit better okay so again we'll make this a bit thicker we'll go with a white kind of color so we can kind of talk about some crossovers now time frame specific we're going to go to the lower time frame so if you want to do some intraday sort of stuff say half an hour time frame you know, let's just talk about, I don't know, we'll go to Ethereum, for example. You may want to try and get involved in some moves, but it's kind of hard to kind of get a gist of it in terms of this because the overall trend is actually bearish when you zoom out because it looks like shite. But there may be some moves that you can catch on the way. Now, you can add another EMA, right? That is the kind of the simplistic kind of way to do it. And not many people like this move because it is a lot, you know, a bit of risk involved here. But... There's other variations you can do now. The one that, you know, I like to use is obviously, I like to use EMAs. I don't actually use a strategy, but I did in the past, and it does work in some cases, but not all the time, right? There's different variations you can do. So you may want to, like, ride a trend when 
the EMA, for example, has crossed below. So for this instant, the 13 is orange. When we're below that level, you can remain in position until it crosses over. That's a massive short, for example. Again, you can see this here, impulse going up. You can follow the chart. And again, look at this, where we've had a crossover here. We're literally buying it. And then, yeah, you can literally ride it. It's still, still not crossed over yet. Still not crossed over yet. So that is one method you can use. Now, these all kinds of different variations. Now, one I would suggest, don't go too low because you will start getting confused. Try and make it a little bit wider so you can kind of see certain things. Now, one that a lot, it's pretty common in the stock market is the eight moving average, right? Or the EMA eight. They call it the trigger line. And that can give you a very, very tight look at the price analysis on the eight. And then you've got an overall kind of a bit of a higher time frame kind of outlook where when you look at that, kind of distance overall of obviously the dump right if we're looking at this period here where it reverses go on to like the six hour time frame it's quite apparent what's happening why would you want to go along why would you want to try and jump back into that you, you don't so you need to kind of look at the gauges and looking at how things are but you can see here very very clearly that there's a lot of moves you can capture in terms of just getting some quick percentages but for me the lower time frames is a bit better on this because you can get a very decent gauge of the market and you can follow momentum but personally, would I use it? Probably not, no. Um, if you want to use a crossover method, utilize it on the higher time frames using different moving average. So what I would suggest, if you're looking at the daily time frame, for example, here, I would look at something a bit different, right? So what I would do with this, bear with me, let me just change this color so it looks a bit more obvious so we kind of see some stuffs. There we go. So if we're looking at this, I would utilize something, and you know, a lot of people use this one, is the 50 moving average is the main base. And then you've got something like, I don't know, maybe the 20 or the 21 is kind of quite common, especially in the stock market, where you can kind of get a gauge of, right, do I buy, do I sell? And when it starts crossing over, you got, right, I can enter a long position. When it starts like kind of going a bit meh or a bit toppy like this, for example, you can start thinking, well, actually, I can just partially take profits. And then you can look for another entry. This is a pullback, an obvious pullback. We'll pull back into it and then it's gone off again. Again, you can like remove your position here. You can see a downtrend is forming and it's hugging that line. That's a simple way of doing it, but not many people like to use these because you know you can get caught up in the emotions. But the one thing about a moving average and a crossover, the emotions with selling it is a bit easier because once it's still doing its thing, it, you can hold the position for a lot longer, in my opinion, and you can kind of see certain things. So when things get a bit rough, like this, for example, where it dips back into certain levels, you might be like, well, yeah, you know, you're kind of a bit, ropey and thinking to yourself well maybe i want to sell it but sometimes it, you know they don't really cross over another one that is quite common too is the 10 and the 20. now this is a one that does actually work pretty well um based on cryptocurrency because of the volatility so if you look at this for example here you know you can look at this pretty tight but realistically though there's money to be made here and essentially a simple kind of you know gauge of understanding momentum the better the trend, obviously, the stronger the impulse. And if you are just following momentum, you may well find, well, these little impulses going up are pretty strong. So you can see here, cool. You can look at that trend and think, wow, that's pretty awesome. Look at how it hugs that line, hits the EMA 20 twice there, and it carries on. You may be thinking, oh, I might sell here, but actually the moving average is saying, well, actually, it's not too bad. We've, we've held a support, it might go higher. And we did, we finally went higher. And you can kind of get out a bit higher than what you would have done then, for example. Again, it's pulling back. You know, you can go long only on all these. You go right long, okay, sell. I'm gonna wait into my stables, wait for it to cross over again, see what happens. And that's just, it's just how it works. It's just price action. So that's the basics of it. But for me, would I use a crossover? Probably not in a volatile market, but if you're looking at the higher time frames, even if you go to that three day chart, for example, you could probably find that you could probably still hold the position for a lot longer. So for example, here, your buying point would be roughly around here. You've just broken above a previous level of structure. That's pretty good. And then you can hold it even in the volatile moves. So as a positional holder, you don't have to get swung out by those small volatility moves. But, you know, you, your exit is basically up here. So that isn't a bad gain. That is just one example. Obviously, if I go down to like the, like Cardano, for example, here, you could probably see a very, very similar sort of story where we've had an impulse. It's been mooning, mooning, mooning. It went all the way up to here, right? That's a monstrous gain. Again, crossover again, you know, this is all the art of it. And again, crossover finally here. There's ways of doing it. Personally, though, I am, a, as you know, I prefer the single entity. I prefer doing it in a simplistic way where if it's green, 
and it has confluence between the total market cap, which is a top oscillator here, which is again on a moving average, and also with the RSI, if they all kind of marry up and it looks pretty good, it'll look good. So in terms of how I would do it, you know, when I'm looking at the daily time frame, why would I want to be in this? When this has gone below, when this is going red, and when we start to get when we get bearish divergences, that is my cue. But the EMA for me becomes a confirmation of the line. It is the weakest support, it's the weakest resistance, but it's a telling tale of what the price action is giving us as a overall metric. When you add confluence between other indicators or trend metrics or momentum, whatever it may be, even volume, whatever it can be, it will help you massively. So I hope this has kind of helped you understand a little bit about EMAs. The one trick though, and I have said it before, is if you are getting too far away from certain metrics and it pulls back, it's a great kind of thing. And again, when you look at this, look at how it's kind of zip, pull back, zip. We're probably going to pull right the way back, back into that level by the dip sort of situation here. But also it could be a, let's remove some more as a position if we're going to continue. And we could actually see us go a much lower if we are looking at trend continuation. When you start adding the fact that this impulse has done this, right? Just to give you an idea here. We pull right the way back into where the 382 is on the Fibonacci, where with confluence is the EMA as a resistance level. That's two levels that you're kind of battling with, right? We're also, you know, we're looking pretty shit anyways, realistically. But the next point could be this, realistically, right? Just to give you a bit of a heads up. You know, I've got that level down here highlighted. We could be pulling right the way back in, into the aid of where the EMA is at the 618 levels, give or take. And then we may just melt even lower, continuation of the downtrend. There's no reason for you to realistically to buy unless you are counter trending or trading or you're accumulating some monstrous key levels where you might be thinking, well, actually, I, there's a good opportunity here to add to my bags with profit only. So there you go. Moving averages, EMAs, all the other stuff in between. Do your research first. Google the name of it. It will tell you the formula, how it works before you start putting in chat. Then back test it. Check it all out. And yeah, enjoy. Keep it simple. Thank you.